Someone asked me this morning, Pastor, what do we do now? Now that the grand jury has made a decision not to indict, now that rioting and looting has plagued and stained our people, what do we do now? We do what we always do when we don't know what to do. We pray. We pray because we believe that prayer will do two great things. It will give you wisdom for the right decisions to make, and prayer will also keep you from making the wrong decisions. We pray like our forefathers and foremothers did as they gathered at churches before they went out to march for our civil rights in an era where it was legal to produce water hoses and police dogs, they prayed. And the power of prayer kept them from violent means of resistance. Prayer kept them in a peaceful place. And it was prayer that allowed God to use them to bring us to a place where we still seek the same justice they did. And I'm of the mindset that if it worked for them, it will work for us. So we come here tonight to pray. We pray for two parents who at the end of all of this have lost a son. We pray. We even pray for Officer Darren Wilson. We know not the burden of his heart and his spirit, but we pray that God's hand of mercy would even rest upon him. We pray for police officers, not only in Ferguson, but around the nation, who proudly wear and hold tight the responsibility of protecting and serving. We pray for city officials and government leaders. We pray for citizens in Ferguson whose hearts are understandably angry and have taken to the streets in violence, and we pray for God's peace to prevail. And we pray that our God, like he did on Mount Carmel with Elijah, would show himself strong. Would you bow with me, saints, as we begin our time of prayer? Mighty and merciful God, who is never distant or removed from the pains of our lives, God, who is able to order catastrophe into blessing, God, who is able to work all things together for good, we invoke and invite your presence now, not only in our time of prayer, but even more, O oh God, to show yourself strong in the city and the streets of Ferguson, Missouri. First and foremost, God, we pray that your healing hand will be upon the heart of a mother and a father who not only mourn the loss of their son, but now bear the burden of a grand jury decision not to indict and witness the stain in the name of their son and violence that was taken in the streets. God, we pray that you would send angels into their lives remind them that our God is yet able. God, we pray a peaceful spirit upon those citizens of Ferguson, Missouri. God, that you would some way root out all the desire for violence and destruction. Oh God, that you would lift up men and women of God who speak your presence into that place. We pray, oh God, that you would be the wisdom in the minds of government officials and those who serve and protect. God, we pray that around this nation, you would rise up those who continue to lift up their voices, declaring that we demand justice whenever there's a death like that. God, we pray that you would show your hand strong, that you would use us as voices of your justice in simple conversations we have around our day. God, that we would not sit silently by while we watch innocent lives continue to be taken. God, give us a boldness of speech the courage to love, and the faith to stand on the wall until we see God move. God, this is our prayer tonight, and we ask you to be present and pleased with what we commit into thy hands. In the name of the one who was victorious, that we might be victorious. In the name of Jesus our Christ, we do pray. And all those who believe that God had not yet finished his work said amen. <laughs> 